Good day, fellow investors. Investing is about constantly looking for opportunities, researching stock markets, researching stocks, creating models, creating lists, comparing those lists, and then finding the best handful of investments that fit common sense investing, value investing, a lot of criteria, and that have a great risk reward perspective so that they lead to long term sustainable returns no matter what happens in the world. And one of those things that I constantly do is research stock markets. And today I will share my and my interns, David Mostel's preliminary research on Chile and the Chilean stock market. I have seen some declines there. So I wanted to dig into the market to see what's going on, if there are any opportunities. Let's go. Let's start with. So this is the table of contents. You can read this on my blog if you prefer Chile and the companies, the overview, and then of course the conclusion. Let's dig into it. So the overview, Chile is the most, Chile, I don't know how to say Chile, is the most developed country in Latin America and the GDP growth has been nice and stable. It's 4% above 4% last year. The debt to GDP is an extremely low levels, below 25%, so in your face develop big countries. The population is expected to grow slowly, but surely over the next 30 years, one, a little around 1% per year. So no big growth, but okay. The currency has been extremely stable towards the dollar and traded in line with the dollar's own strength. The blue line is Chile USD dollar exchange rate and then the trade weighted US dollar index is of course green. Let's look at the ETF. When I see an ETF at price earnings ratio of 19.50 on an, let's say, emerging market, even with great stability, price to book value 1.83, trailing yield 2.10%, mm -mm -mm, and not that great metrics for an uh, average general investment in Chile. So let's look at the components. These are the stocks traded on the New York Stock Exchange, except for Viña Concha de e Toro, which has been delisted, but it's trading over the counter. Oh no, oh, Compañía de Cerveiras Unidas. I know I said those that wrongly, but what can I say? I cannot pronounce Spanish. It's a company which operates in the beverage business. They sell beer, non-alcoholic dream drinks, and it's a stable company. There hasn't been big growth over the past, and they are looking for different investments to scale those growth and scales what they do. So a stable company that will grow slowly, but probably surely. It bottles own brands, but also has licenses for Heineken, AB, Nestle, Pepsi and Dr. Pepper. These are the investment criteria for their organic growth. So high potential profitability, scaling operations, keep developing multi-category proprietary brands, and a competitive balance. They are owned by Heineken 50%, Quienco, another company, local managers, local stock market and New York Stock Exchange. They focused on growth. 2002-2007 the growth in sales was good, extremely good, 11% per year and 12.5% net income growth. So if they can keep up with that then it's a very interesting story. But I don't know if they will be able to keep up with that because the last few years haven't been that great, especially as consumption growth also isn't growing that fast. We'll see how that goes. Also, you can see here that the earnings per share didn't grow over the last seven years. So the yearly growth is from a very low base in 2002. So I can also show great numbers from 2002. Another bottling company, Akio, let's say. So they are bottle they bottle for Coca-Cola, soft drink juices, mineral water and normal water. So 30% revenue in Chile, 32% in Brazil, 30% in Argentina and 8% in Paraguay. As there has been some turmoil in the markets, they have been hit. But still, the revenues have been stable, slowly growing, 5% volumes not growing that fast, so revenue goes better than volumes. Net debt to EBITDA is 1.4%, 2.3%, very low. Also looking for inorganic growth, 3.3% dividend yield and a payout ratio of 69. So price earnings ratio of 17, too much for me. I prefer to find such companies at 8, 9, 10 price earnings ratio and then we can discuss. Vina Concha del Toro is a very interesting company. 
produces wine. The growth has been very, very good in some sectors. The margins have been improving. The stock has doubled. I remember looking at this stock when it was at 20. Now I think it's at 40. But again, it has a price earnings ratio of 20. Trying to expand margins so it might do even better in the future, but I'm not a specialist on the wine industry. Don't know how will that go. Banco de Chile is a high profitable and strong private bank in Chile, very stable. It provides a complete range of financial services to corporations, diversified business model, retail, wholesale, solid competitive position, almost the leader in every segment in Chile. It's fairly priced, price earnings ratio of those banks are around 17. Similarly, Banco Santander de Chile, they are growing a bit faster in comparison to other banks. So who knows what they are doing? Are they risking more or not? I didn't dig deeper because again, the price earnings ratio is around 17. So the dividends are high there, but not enough for me. And then we come to something interested. Similarly, Tau Corp Banca, then we come to something interested in Latin America. All these energy utilities are always cheaper than anything else you look at. So that's very interesting and that's why I focus on the utility sector there. Especially as there are some very special situations where they get paid in dollars and they're priced at the country's risk and they are priced at the currency's risk. I have give, uh, given a quick look for now at EOCC another generation utility in Chile that has fallen significantly in the last few months. The stock is down, I think, 33%. They have growth in plan. They hope to grow EBITDA over the next few years. Not much, but significantly that will increase the dividends as they lower the capex from the investments. Stock is traded at a price earnings ratio of 10. And here we come, as I mentioned, the dividends. I forgot to say it before. There is a dividend tax, withholding tax between 18 and 35% there in Chile. So you have to see with your broker what you will be taxed on those dividends. So don't get excited about those high dividends or discount them by the 30%, 35% possible tax rate. So there will be growth, renewables, they are doing a good job. Chile is a sta stable company, especially if copper goes up, then all these will do very, very well. Similarly, NRC's price earnings ratio of 11, but they have more things around Brazil, Argentina, Peru, Colombia. So another company to look into. I will do special models and I will see what I found about these electrical companies. The dividend payouts are significant. There is the potential to really increase the dividend. So long-term dividend investments seekers might look at those Latin American utilities. Geopark is an oil company, they drill for oil in South America. They have really been growing their production, expect to grow their production even more. And we are making a model on this company to see, okay, is it a good oil investment? And I will also discuss where, how, I, how I see investing in oil and when I see investing in oil. I'm very patient and I have a long-term attitude to that. So when it comes to the video of this company, we will also discuss the oil prices. Another interesting company is Latam Airlines Group. We would have to compare all the Latin American airlines to see whether there is some potential to invest here. They have a lot of debt, which is not that good, especially if something happens, but the demand for passenger flights increased across the country. SQM is fertilizers, lithium. I remember looking at it at 16. I didn't see the lithium boom coming. So I missed on that. As for the long-term lithium, there is, as we have seen in the Norilsk analysis, there is a lot of that about sentiment and there isn't that much demand, demand from the market yet. So we can wait to see whether the trend will be there and how to best play that. There is still time. Let just wait for the sentiment to cool off. Price earnings ratio already high at 28 in this part of the cycle. I don't know, I, I really don't know there. Conclusion, banking sector, difficult to see through understanding the companies, depending on an economy growth, increasing loans. As always, I'm not very attractive to banking, beverage sectors, solid businesses, stable businesses, but there is always the question of the price, utilities to look into, GPRK to look into 
airlines many risks cyclical depending on oil prices etc sqm lithium of course important fertilizer depending again on the price other companies in chile that are traded only in chile from the etfs copec falabella cpmc Senkosud, only Senkosud has 11.6, others have 23, 26 and 23. So a re relatively expensive to invest in Chile, you won't get a valuation advantage there. So this is what I do, I constantly look at markets. If you want to get all what I do for a price of 68 cents per day, so yes, you get me with 15 years of experience, a PhD, to practically work for you and give you ideas, do research for you, explain things for you, comment with you on investments for just 68 cents a day, please check my stock market research platform. Subscribe to the channel as there are a few more Chilean stocks that are coming up in videos, but also China and all emerging markets, value, whatever, to help you with your investing needs, success, and to really clear out the complex things and focus on the common sense investing values that lead to great returns. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.